Meanwhile, first time presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is surprising political pundits with his recent rise in the polls. A new Monmouth poll has him in third place behind former President Trump and current Florida governor Ron DeSantis. So is Vivek Ramaswamy worried he might actually wind up being the target of Donald Trump as some of the others have? Uh, he joins us right now. Vivek, good morning to you. Morning. How are you? I'm doing okay. But that's uh, whoever wrote that intro made a good question. And that is, you know, we've seen the former president go after Ron DeSantis, uh, Chris Christie, Nikki Haley. Why hasn't he gone after you yet? Well, the fact is, unlike many of the other candidates in this race, Steve, I'm not running against anybody. I am running for this nation. I'm not just running from something. I'm running to something. And the truth is, I do think President Trump was an excellent president. I agree with him on a lot of policies, but I am running in this race to lead us forward and take the America First agenda to the next level. So America First, it doesn't belong to Trump. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country. That's the character with which I'm running this race. And I think that's going to probably make it very difficult for other candidates to attack me because I'm not attacking them either. Sure. And you are, as I mentioned a moment ago, rising in the polls. Uh, the Washington Post had a headline that said Vivek Ramaswamy runs as Trump 2.0, an outsider with extreme proposals. You know, you would think from the outset, that, oh, that's a positive thing. But then it goes on to describe you as you're like Trump, only more extreme. You know, I disagree with that characterization of more or less extreme. It is true that I'm taking our America first agenda further than Trump did. It is clear that the wall was insufficient for the southern border. They're building tunnels underneath that wall, cartel financed. I've said that I would use the military to secure that southern border. I won't just put a good person on top of the Department of Education. I've said that I would shut it down. I would end affirmative action that was created by executive order. Mm -hmm. I said I would take a, a pen and draw a line through it. So in many ways, I am going further than Trump did. Perhaps the Washington Post finds that to be extreme. I find it to be sensible. I think it's what the people of this country will want. And that's why I'm confident we're going to win this. You know, w one of the things about you is you are willing to put your money where your mouth is because you have been very successful. Uh, you're living the American dream. And you've, you've said in the past you're willing to spend up to $100 million of your own money to become president of the United States. Why does it mean that much well, look, to you? Part of the reason it means so much to me is that I have lived the American dream, Steve. My parents came to this country with almost no money. I've gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. And the thing about this country is that story is extraordinary precisely because it is not extraordinary. It is the norm. It is possible for every kid in this country, or at least it should be. And I am worried that we're not going to be able to pass that American dream on to my two sons and their generation. So it is personal to me. It's also important to me to stay independent. Mm -hmm. I think the Republican Party suffered from this in 2016. In the rest of the primary, outside of Trump, it suffers from it today. You have a lot of super PAC puppets, people who are subject to what the donor class says they can and cannot say. I did, I did not want to ask the mega donor class, the super PAC class, for permission to run. And that's why I decided to use my own money to get this campaign off right. the ground. We've put in over 15 million already. And then we're using small dollar donors to lift this up. So very different character to this campaign. All right. You know that as you rise in the polls, people are looking into your, ba in, into your past. Yep. And in fact, somebody has uncovered uh, in college you were, I've seen the video, you were a libertarian rapper. Explain that, Mr. Ramchwami. <laughs> well, look, they, I, the things they're digging up, they're going deep. And I have to say, some of these opposition research stories are false, but I will confirm that one is true. I was a little bit of a libertarian freestyler in college and had some fun with it. Do you That's remember accurate. any of that rapper? Do you have some freestyling to do today, Vivek? But it's not like a kind of thing you remember, right? You just sort of, you just say what you're inspired to say. So, you know, I, I like, to, that's kind of what I'm doing on the campaign trail in some sense is freestyling my message. All right, very good. You, people, you, you, go ahead. You want to join us on the campaign trail. You know, you want to join us on the campaign trail, you can do that. It's a, I, I often open up, I say, my name's Vivek. It rhymes with cake. It ain't about thee. It is about me. It is about thee. The United States is about liberty. So Fox and friends, join us on the trail. We'll have some fun. I'll see you out the trail. Very nicely done, sir. 
Well, you guys should join us, and we'll put on a real show. So if you come out, we'll make a deal. You come out to the campaign trail. All we right. got the audience. We'll do something in full form. Stop by Fox and Friends tomorrow. We got uh, Flo Rida. You and Flo Rida, I'm telling you, you could go viral. Just saying. We may give it a try. All right. Vivek, uh, good luck to you. Thank you. You bet.